two sleeps away from the preliminary finals getting underway. We're excited about it. The new Kia Nero electric SUV range has landed. We're excited about that as well. Lots of different audio kicking around at the moment. But we want to start like this. Wednesday is the day that these teams sit down and do selection. They sit down and work out whether their side's going to... How the side is going to uh, look coming into the game. I want you to be the selector out there. If you're a Melbourne supporter, if you're a Port Adelaide supporter, if you're a Geelong supporter, or if you're a Western Bulldog supporter, are you making any changes? And if so, what are they? So right now, Melbourne have got a pretty settled side, but there's the discussion. Max Gorn says yesterday that... Nathan Jones is the 24th player. Um, to- Jack Viney says Jaden Hunt is ready to go. You've got Hibbert and Melksham in the wings. Port Adelaide on the weekend. Hamish Hartlett's going to be a very tough hard luck story if he doesn't play. George yardie has got through a sample game, kicked a couple of goals. Tom Cleary, Lockie Jones. The Dogs, you know, Bontempelli, question mark or not, who comes in? Is Martin a factor? And then you've got the Geelong Footy Club. So one three hundred seven three six seven three six. You be the selector. You tell us. Wednesday, don't worry about when the sides come yep. out on Thursday or Friday. This is the day when those teams sit down to work out which team can get them into a grand final. I like it. Waitman is definitely out for the dog. So who comes in to replace him? Is it simple? In your mind, Gary, is it as simple? And we'd love to hear from dogs fans out there or fans of any of the clubs or anyone, for that matter, that's been watching the final series, who should come in? If Is it as simple as... Johannesson plays as part of the 22 and not the sub. He came on as a medical sub last week. Or do they do something slightly differently because they're playing against a rampaging, or the last time we saw them play, they were rampaging Port Adelaide. And we know they're going to be playing in front of their screaming fans again over there this weekend. Help us out here, doggy supporters. My gut feel would be that Johannesson is the like for like. They played him as a forward for most of the season. He came on, he did a couple of nice things. Does he kick goals, zone. though? Like, with, with Waitman, you actually do hit the scoreboard. Does he hit the scoreboard enough to justify that? Well, and how big a risk? How big a risk is it at this stage of the year when somebody like, and we know that Wallace, uh, Mitch Wallace can hit the scoreboard, but he hasn't played for a long time. Step up in pace in the game and speed in a game, although he's an experienced campaigner, will you risk playing somebody like him? Well, that's, that's what we want to know. We want to find the answer to. Narkel, of course, uh, is he going to come in for Geelong? Parfit goes out. He's mm. out with that hamstring. He's had hamstring surgery. Is there any chance at all that Stefan Martin, when you look at their ruck stocks, you see they got butchered. Tim English, very good in the second half, but... They came up against Oscar McInerney, who tired, right? He tired in the yep. back half of that game. He was enormous in the first half. English was very good. They tired. Not against Port Adelaide. You got the one-two punch, a Lysett and a Laddams. So is that, are you satisfied that English and Young can get the job done against Lysett and um, Laddams? Or... Is Martin just that little wild card sitting in the mm. background? These are the questions that are answered today at Selection. Michael's in Croydon. G'day, Michael. Good morning, guys. How are you going? Good, thanks. Good. Um, yeah, I'm Port Adelaide, and the two changes I would make would be George Yardi's in for Marshall and uh, Hartlett in for, um, for Bonner. Um, I, I don't trust Bonner and, Marsh, and uh, Marshall oh, with... Um, just in the big games, I just don't trust them. Uh, Hartlett obviously got the years of experience. I think that uh, that um, that cool head will uh, get us through. Uh, he hasn't played for a while though, Hartlett. Michael, Are you worried about that at all? I do agree. I do agree with that, but I think he'll be all right. I think that experience is where it comes into it. Um, I don't trust. I just don't one hundred percent trust Bonner. He's been good lately, but some of his games this year have just made me not, like get off him. Tommy Morris, uh, good on you. Thanks for that, Michael. Tommy Morris is reporting here that Joel Smith's done his hamstring. Now, um, Fox Footy understands that Michael Hibbard will replace Joel Smith if Australia's hamstring at training has already been ruled out. Has that come across your desk or not, Whispers? I saw that on a text that came through before. Uh, is that right? I'm just looking at Trent now, our man out there, our come producer. On, he'll be, have, we need to be all over that stuff. He'll have it uh, for us in a minute. Phil's in Tullamarine. Good morning, Phil. Yeah, hi. Um, yeah, look, I think um, Stephen Martin will have to come in and I'd actually put Lewis Young up forward and have JJ as a medical sub. And it'll depend on the weather, of course, but if um, the weather's going to be uh, wet, well, obviously JJ comes in and Lewis Young be the sub. I don't, well, think, it, Phil, I don't think it is going to be wet. And we've heard, I've heard Luke Beveridge talk about Stephen Martin. He's not ready. You know, he hasn't played and... To bring him in for a prelim would be a risk. He hasn't played for a long, long time now, so that's yeah one of the and and 
and then Luke looks at you and says, you don't understand how tough footy is if you think that yeah, Stefan can come in off this short game time, but then you see what happened to them in the first half. Is that going to change your mind? Hey, Gary, philosoph- philosophically, um, you, I, I think that you know, Port Adelaide want to play the game a lot quicker than even the Bulldogs want to play the game. So therefore, does Luke Beveridge try and match the speed of Port Adelaide with that in mind, or does he go the other way and try and drag them more into sort of like that contested trench warfare that they've been really good at over the over the journey of the Bulldogs? Well, contested footy is going to be absolutely critical. That is one of the great measurements. I don't think Port Adelaide lost the game when they've won contested footy. That's yeah. as simple as that. So uh, they'll, they'll do both. I mean, the Western Bulldogs, have, they, they back themselves in with, with their ball movement, but they've got to be really good at the source as well. So oh, I don't know. The Georgiades and the Marshall one's interesting. Mm-hmm. That's the real, like, this. You know, the suspicion is that they are a bit top-heavy if you try and go with all of them, all of the big forwards. So one of them's going to pay. George Yardy's got injured at the wrong time because Marshall's form in what had been the Western Bulldogs game um, was really ordinary in terms of that particular game. But we know that Kenny's got great faith in him. So that'll be fascinating. And then you've got Hartlett, 193 games in. He's going to be a hard luck story if he doesn't play. We've got Kenny on the line. He's in South Morang. Good morning, Ken. Yeah, good morning, Whispy and Gaz. You know, I don't Kenny? know if I'm missing anything here, but I don't think the doggies need to do too much different. Um, we've played them twice. We flogged them the first time over there. The second time, we weren't playing our best footy. We led all night. Mm. Last five minutes, lost by two points. I think we've realigned a little bit. Um, yeah, well... I think we're, you know, every chance to beat. Paul. So you got only one change, Kenny. You've got a force change, Waitman out. So you just take in Johannesson uh, from a medical sub and putting him in the 22? He plays and Ed Richards comes in, I reckon. If Ed that Richards. Was, if it was up to me. All right, good one, Kenny. That's what we love. This is the, the Western Bulldogs supporters mm. who watch their team closer than anyone else, Wisp. Uh, yeah, Richards has been out injured. I think he's been ready. I think he was ready to play last week. He, he, it, would he be, medical, in your so? mind, a front-line consideration here? Um, uh, if you go like for like, okay? So you've had yeah. you've had that bloke playing, Waitman, and he's your, you know, your forward, pressure forward, mm-hmm. but he can do more than that. He can kick goals, that type of thing. Yep. I, I, don't, I don't see Johannesson as a like for like replacement to him. Don't you? Well, they've used him in that role for most of the year as a small forward who puts pressure on. Now, he hasn't done it being as spectacular as Waitman, but that, that's where he's been redeployed for most of the year. So... That's the way I'm reading it, um, mm. but we'll just wait. And the, um, Luke Beveridge has got his, his selections and his ability to throw his team around are unsurpassed, I reckon. Yep. Uh, Brenton in Wangaratta. Good morning, Brenton. Good morning, guys. How are you? Good, yeah, mate. I, I'm a big Port Adelaide man, so I think in a perfect world for me, George Yard is in for Marshall, Jones in for Bonner, but Bonner hasn't done anything wrong. He's always beaten his man oh. playing defence. But my scoop for you guys is that I think Hartlett is going to announce his retirement. Last week he played for the Port Magpies, and in the last quarter they put Hartlett, you know, as a defender, they put him at full forward in the square by himself and did everything they could to get him a final goal before his last game. So oh, I can't yeah, see good. Hartlett playing. Good intelligence. Yeah. Thanks for that, uh, Brenton. So George Yardy's played in the sample. Cleary played in the sample. Hartlett played in the sample. Lockie Jones and Pal Pepper played in the sample. Pal Pepper got a cork. He came off um, and played about a half. I don't think they're going to drop Bonner. I don't, no, I don't think, think they're they're I don't think they'll make a change to their back. back. No, I don't think they no. will. Hey, foxfooty.com.au understands. This is what they're reporting, that Michael Hibbert will replace Joel Smith, who strained his hamstring at training and has already been ruled out. We're still trying to make contact with Bob. It's a little bit difficult because of the time uh, difference at the moment, but we will before nine o'clock this morning. We'll try. When was and... this reported? Six seventeen a.m. from Tommy Morris. We'll ring Tom Morris. He'll he'll tell us. Get Tommy on the line on the line, and he can. Uh, it's a it's a great story from him. Well, not great for Melbourne, or not great for Joel Smith, but they are well placed to cover for him. I think Hibbard's been there, and he's an experienced player. So if that's the like for like, then. Um, Hopefully not too much of an unsettling situation. How did how hard did you go on Adam Trelaw the other night on the couch? I backed him actually. Yeah. Um, the other two boys were pretty pretty tough on him. So what did you actually say about him? I just backed him. He didn't have a great day. No, he, he had a bad day. Yeah. But, but I backed him and Bevo. To, to, I backed Luke Beveridge as the great man manager and psych, sort of quasi psychologist to 
to get inside Adam Trelaw. I think Adam's a really emotional person. Like, and he's admitted it. He's mm. an emotional person. And you know, it just looked like it, the game or the occasion or the fact that he, he was struggling. It got to him and he started to internalise. So... I just reckon that Luke Beveridge will get, you know, he'll use all that. He's had a good year. I mean, Jack McRae came out really strongly and defended him and said his form's been sensational for 10 weeks. He had a really shitey day uh, in that first final, but they expect him to bounce back. And maybe with Bontempelli a bit sore, he might get more time in the middle. So I think he'll bounce. I think he'll bounce. Uh, uh, Robbo's in safety yep. beach. Go, Robbo. Hey, guys. Hey, Tim. How you going, guys? Good, Robbo. Going well, thanks. That's good. Um, you probably heard that. Before that, uh, what's the definition of insanity? You do something yep. over and over and get the same result? Or expect exactly. a different result, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And they're going to do that with Lewis Young, and we're going to get smashed to the smithereens. Well, this is the interesting thing for me. Um, you, you've got a one-two punch. Oscar McInerney was fantastic in the first half, but didn't he didn't have any ruck support, so he got worn. I think he was worn out by the end of it, and English was able to come in and um, have an impact. You're going to get a big one-two punch with a fresh Laddams and Lysette, which is one of the challenges mm. for, for Luke Beveridge and his team. And do you think that doesn't make a difference? Go back, cast your mind back to when Melbourne played against Geelong, the last home and away game down at Cadinia Park or GMHBA Stadium, Gary. What happened in the second quarter? Yeah, they got split open, Melbourne, in the middle of the ground. That's right. They from, they took the ball away from the centre bounce. I think they kicked seven goals in the second quarter, Geelong. Yep. Most of those came as a result of them winning the ball out of the centre bounce. Three goals from centre bounce. That's right. And uh, what it meant was their field position was completely different. They were up against a six-on-six six against Melbourne. That's the best way to break down Melbourne's defence. And my point is, you get the ball out of the centre bounce in modern-day football against anyone, and you're facing six and six, it takes away the Alira Alira problem straight away. Spot on, Whispers. You're on a, I always say this every year. The preliminary final brings the very, very best out of you. Bruce, well done, Rivers. Lewis, brilliantly, Gunston. Burgoyne to put them in front. He doesn't miss. He's kicked three. Hawthorne back in front. Who's going to forget that? 2013 prelim v Geelong. Uh, Shawnee Burgoyne just slides through his third and Bruce's call was magnificent. He doesn't miss. He played in nine preliminary finals. He's won six and lost three. We just thought we'd get a, a quick chat from him for those who are wondering what makes preliminary finals such an, an amazing and huge uh, part of the footy calendar. And Shawnee joins us on the line. Uh, good morning, Sean. Yeah, guys. Thanks for having me. Again. Uh, well, well into retirement, I'm sure you're nice and relaxed. This might be an early wake up for you. But what is it about preliminary finals? You played in nine, you won six, you lost three. Some say it's the most nerve wracking of all of the finals. What do you say? Yeah, I think I think you're probably almost spot on there. Um, just reminiscing about all my prelims. Um, you know, they're all close games. You know, we are the on the back of the, the three peat. Those prelims were all won by under a goal. Um, uh, and the one we lost in 2011 to Collingwood was, was you know, we lost that one. So lost that one under a goal and won the next three by, by under a goal as well. So they're very close games, that's for sure. Sean, can you – Port Adelaide is obviously one of the teams that's playing this weekend. Uh, you were there. You started off your career there. You played in the premiership for them. What is it about this club? I know this is the new Port, not the old Port, but what is it about this football club – that uh, gets into the hearts and the minds and the souls of the people over there in Port Adelaide? Yeah, well, um, when I came through the Port Adelaide Magpies Juniors and, you know, the, it was drummed into you from, from way back then, they, they don't think that's the same system now, but it was, you know, you love us or you, or you hate us, and the, us against the world type uh, mentality. Um, and then when I was drafted into the power, it was, it was a lot of the same Port Magpies people who were in the power when they established and, just um, it just built into the culture from there, um, and then you know you you come through the ranks, and obviously you're competing against Adelaide Crows every every day of the week, you know, for for members, fans, sponsors, all those you know all those different things, and it just builds a bigger rivalry in South Australia. So they've placed themselves really well this year. They've obviously got a you know a team that's back to fully fit, and they're firing at the right stage. So um, they've got the their home ground as well, advantage with, with their fans, which you know. In times like these, when you're playing interstate and um, you know the fans become an amazing contributor to the game as well. Do you think it's more? Is there something unique about the club itself? I mean, you can compare it with Hawthorne. Was there something completely different about Port Adelaide that you found about Hawthorne? 
Um, well, I found well, probably the similarities with the two clubs was they, you know, they've got great history and they celebrate the history of the club. Um, you know, Port Adelaide obviously have um, a lot of SNFL, I think 36 SNFL premierships, which they draw on the back of um, their, their success. And I heard you talk before about just um, re- just before about if Russell Ebert was to toss a coin from his backyard or something along those lines. You know, when you got champions and like like Russell, who who used to work within the club every year up until he obviously had his health battles. But um, you have the the the, 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 tr- the traditional um, champions of the club always around, hanging around at functions um, and always just passing on their knowledge about football and all those things. So they do draw on their history. Hey, we're speaking to Sean Berger and Shawnee who's played in nine preliminary finals. I don't know what the, the split up is in those of those prelims, how many you had the weekend off or how many you've had to play through, but is there is there a preference, do you think? Is it does it advantage the team that does have the weekend off or did you like the fact that you continued to play and had continuity through the finals? Yeah, the more I got into my career, the more I actually um, enjoyed playing through the finals and not having the bye. <laughs> I thought um, when you have the week off, you try to you try to replicate the game in that week off, and you try to get the same running, you know, the running GPS distances and times, just without the the, the bumps and the and the hits um, during training. And then you come into the game, and uh, I think all prelim finals we may have at, at Hawthorne may have got off to a sluggish start as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, which I think can the, the week off can contribute because you just haven't you're probably more mentally relaxed. Um, I know you sort of spoke about Port Adelaide before um, in the prelim we played against them against Hawthorne. They missed all their shots, a lot of shots in the first quarter, um, and, and that was in the prelim. They were able to get back and, and obviously win that game and really tight, tough game to get into the grand final. And when uh, when you have those tight games, I think it steals you for the grand final. Many many years ago when we played um, North Melbourne at Port Adelaide at Footy Park, we won the game by, I think, 80 points. And we had an easier game in the prelim. Went in, obviously, got smacked by Geelong. Um, so I reckon, the, for me personally, I think the tight, tougher game of a prelim prepares you best for a grand final. Of these four teams left, and you've just stepped out of the game, so you've seen them all up close and personal. Who do you think is the best equipped of the four teams left in the finals to win the flag? Yeah, it'd be, it'd be pretty hard to go past Port Adelaide at the moment. Um, um, yeah, they're, they're, from what I can see, you've got their best team in. Um, I think they've got quality minutes back into Robbie Gray, Zach Butters, and some of the guys, Dersma, the players who um, have come back in. They're playing at home. Aaliyah Lee is on fire in the, <laughs> in the back line. I think they're just peaking at the right time. Um, the other teams, I think, at the moment are just up and down a little. Um, and, they're, and they're still searching for, for their best footy. Um, Western Bulldogs obviously lost their last three, then won last week. Um, some, um, some some good um, form up, but obviously Bontempelli's having an injury, and I think Melbourne and, and the other teams are, are just trying to still find their best footy where, where Port Adelaide are just purring along nicely at the moment, I think. Talking to Sean Burgoyne, just one final question before you let you go. Everybody uh, wants a piece of you at the moment. It's been reported the Crows are pursuing you, Port Adelaide are pursuing you, probably other clubs are out there too. Where are you going to be next season? Yeah, we're uh, just working through that now. So we're, look, we're uh, trying to get back into SA. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so my family are pretty keen to move back to South Australia and um, just reconnect with our families and, 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 and start life after, life after footy back there. And um, we're in the process of doing that now. Good on you, Shawnee. Hey, thanks so much for giving us a, uh, some time this morning. You're one of the great well, one of the great players of all time, but we think prelims, we think of you. So uh, thanks for sharing it, and good luck for whatever the future does hold. No worries. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. On you, Sean. Shawnee Burgoyne. Uh, he's got the Port Adelaide Footy Club there as his pick. Hey, by the way, uh, Tommy Morris, who had that story, was spot on the money. You can catch him on AFL tonight, this evening. He does the first crack on Sunday night. Right throughout the finals, you can feel the finals on Fox, the home of finals on Fox Footy, Channel 504 on Foxtel. You so own... We pre- Sorry. We just appreciate Tommy jumping on that all. Yeah, we do. We do. You own the rights to uh, Whippy Watson. Um, is it possible that we could play the best of Whippy next week? The, oh, awesome, fresh adventures. Is that a possibility? Well, that's up to you.
you shut the whole thing down because uh, the well, license fee wasn't paid by Hutchie. No, it got shut down because there was a dispute over the ownership of which we have now prevailed and we've... Uh, we've clearly oh, you've sorted that, that out, have you? Yeah, we've won that. We yeah. clearly won that. Um, Ed from Cheltenham loved my idea about the underage competition, how good it would be for yeah. an under-19 competition, but... Unfortunately, we can't do it this year, so that's a bit of a, a disappointment. Sadly, no. Well, you'll be able to do some interviews, though, next week. You'll be out of quarantine. You'll be you able know, to I wander around with a microphone over there in WA and catch up with everybody. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be doing that for us, Whispers. So hopefully, it can bring you some really good, or bring us, our SEN family, some good stuff from over here in Perth. Andrew Johns is in some space, and away goes his brother. Matthew John scores. Thanks to Mate Internet and Mobile, Australia's most satisfied customers. NBN from $59. Here's Matthew Johns. Well, I've been talking all morning about how once preliminary final week kicks over, Tim Watson goes to another gear, both uh, from a playing point of view, but also his broadcasting has been exemplary. I think Matthew Johns would be <laughs> exactly the same. He's been good enough to join us ahead of week one of the NRL finals. Hello, Matthew. Hello, guys. Hey, Tim. How are you, lads? Oh, oh Tim, shining brightly as he always does at this time of the year. How would you rate yourself well, as a finals what, performer, Gary? That's what stars do, mate. Exactly. That's what stars do. Twinkle, and twinkle. We, and did you shine ever so brightly at this time of the year? Absolutely, mate. I don't. <laughs> hey, listen. As you blokes know, I don't need this time of the year to shine brightly. I'm like a perpetual star. <laughs> I'm, I, this time of year, I'm nine over here. Maddie is. Pre Tim, that's what they call me. Ah, oh, Not... yes, nice, nice. Pre- now, what, pre- so, Gaz, are you in um, Perth? I am, mate. Yeah. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Been oh. here for exactly. I'll tell you exactly how long. Twelve days, thirteen hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I got, I got something for you. If you're looking for something to watch, yep. there is a special on Netflix called Turning Point. It's a series. Uh, it's on all the events in and around the world that led to 9-11. It is unbelievable. Right, it is right. it is really, really interesting. So, Gaz, well, On what platform? Get into it. Uh, Netflix. Netflix. All right. I'll be on to that today. I've, 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 I've exhausted that's, that's all of my avenues. Hey, yeah, Matty, you're, yeah. A vorac- you're a voracious reader, aren't you? I've read that about you when you were selling your house, that you had all sorts of books there in your library. Yes. Yes, that's right, Tim. Uh, you're a Jeffrey Archer fan. Have you been a, a reader of his books over the year and Wilbur Smith, or do you go a little bit deeper than that? Uh, mate, I'm not a fiction. I don't read fiction, Tim. Now, um, Tim, we have a problem here, right? See, see Gary, Tim, me and Tim were going to have a, a trick ready on you where we were going to do a bit of the chaser. And he told me, Trent, your producer, was going to try send all the answers through, but Tim, they haven't come. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, okay, if they, haven't, if they haven't come, I'll give you, I'll give you just one yeah. question, okay? Just off the top yeah. of your head. Like, yeah. I rang yeah. Gary the other day on Sunday afternoon. It was 2 o'clock our time, so it was about 12 o'clock Perth time. I said to him, what are you doing? He said, I'm in the bath. <laughs> I said, oh, no. what are you doing? He said, I'm in the bath reading a Jeffrey Archer book, right? So was he reading here, A, B or C? Was he reading Hidden in Plain Sight, Mightier Than the Sword, or The Short, The Long and the Tall? Which of those three books do you think he might have been reading in the bath? Uh, the Short, The Long and the Tall. <laughs> Correct. I don't know where this is going, to be perfectly honest. Correct. Uh, cor- Fantastic! This is good. I love the chaser. God, I love it. Hey, do you reckon? Larry, do you reckon Larry's doing a better job than um, our old mate used to do? No, I don't. Oh, uh, <laughs> controversial. <laughs> that is controversial. No, he just, he just. If I had a uh, look, if I had to give a tip to Larry, mate, just don't be try to be so nice all the time, mate. Just you got to have a little bit of, got to have a little, yeah. You know, uh, I was going to say I won't say it. No, but he's got to uh, needs a bit of an edge. Yes, you've got to have a bit of an edge. I, I miss the theatrics of um, of uh, the fellow O'Keefe. Andrew O'Keefe. Andrew, yeah. Andy. Andrew I, O'Keefe. There you go. Yes, I watch the Chaser. I always get the last three minutes when I turn over to get ready for Ch- Channel Wisps news, and um, his ability, Larry's, to get the the questions out quickly 
when it's close, mm. he hasn't quite nailed that. That would be my No, opinion. he hasn't. It, <laughs> no. it is frustrating. That quarter of a second <laughs> multiplied by 12 questions <laughs> could be a lot. Uh, I tell you, so what we do, myself and the wife, mm. we watch at 3 o'clock, we record the English... Uh, the English version of it, yep, uh, which is really good. The bloke who runs yep. it there was an old soccer player, and he he was a musical theatre over there. He's he's really really good. Uh, and we also record a show called Tipping Point, which is excellent, mate. Is really really good. If you watch it, it's actually it's my favourite show. And then we record those, and then we it's watch the Australian afternoon. version. <laughs> Jesus, yeah, I know. Afternoon. I've got it all stored. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's a crazy. That's a crazy household you've got going there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know. We're pretty wild. <laughs> hey, Tom, I don't, I don't know. In our 20s. I, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce Tom's surname. It, tri- Turbo. Yep. Just to call him Turbo yep. Tom. Tri- yep. Yep. Tri- yep. Tri- yes. Is he? Is he the? Is he the gun that we have to worry about this weekend for the Storm? Tim, in a game where you've just got superstars across the across the board. Uh, including Cameron Munster, who's the best big game player in the game. The game is defined by the ability of them to try to curve Tom Travojevic. He is, un- boys, he is unbelievable. I think at the moment, uh, he's on a 15-week run of form. That is the best I have ever seen wow. in my time in rugby league, by, by far. There was different points where players have done really good things for a period of time. I've never seen anything like this. He scored a try the other night. He beat nine blokes. Yeah, I saw that. Um, and what he is, boys, he's got the perfect temperament. Like, he, he's a really highly intelligent bloke. He got about, you know, I think about 96 in the HSC. Really smart, uh, terrific bloke, great temperament, and ridiculously tough. And just incredible athlete. So all those factors rolled up, mate, I, I honestly, he, uh, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, they played at side the Bulldogs, and they handled him quite well. But he just could. He just kept going at him, going at him, going at him. For most of the game, I thought oh, Tom's a little bit off. He ended up scoring three tries. Ooh. He um, and and I think I've said to you blokes before. He was a guy that at fourteen, fifteen years of age, the Swans uh, recognised mm. and threw a lot of money at him. But his family are real rugby league people, and yeah. So, so, so Matty, tell me this: right? we're not. This will be as come as a huge surprise. We're not. Super, super, all over the rugby league situation. What? So, if yeah, I know, I know, if it was a midfielder in in you know from an AFL point of view, you go okay, you got to tag him, and therefore you can put someone on mm. him who runs with him and tries to yeah. stop him at a clearance or a stoppage or stops him running yeah. to certain areas. How do you yep. how do you deal with that? What would Melbourne Storm be? What plans would they have in place to try and sort of yeah you know, dull the influence? Yeah. Well, if there's a side that can can curve him, it'll be Melbourne. They're very, very good at recognising, um, coming up with a plan how to do it. Look, what it is, boys, you can't put anyone on him individual. You can't do that in rugby league. It's got to be a collective effort. I, I think what you're, of all Travojevic, he's a threat right across the field, but he's predom- the, the biggest threat of him is through the middle. So I think what you'll see with the defensive formation from Melbourne, the moment he starts to run the ball, they'll squeeze inwards which leaves them vulnerable to a long pass over the top, but that's the lesser of two evils. Um, to give you an idea about the Melbourne Storm, I mean, in 2017, the year they won the comp, Jason Tamalolo is about 125 kilos. He was just charging through everyone. He's just a yardage phenomenon, and no one could stop him. And the Melbourne Storm did a lot of tape on him and said, listen, we're going to go back to a really old, age-old tactic, and we're just going to chop him around the legs from side on. And um, it just totally nullified him. And that's, but this bloke's a completely different kettle of fish. He's ridiculously far, uh, fast, and he's got a really, he's got a big stride length, which makes a legs tackle really different. So, uh, I think Melbourne still win it, boys. But man, I, 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 like if he has a night out, Melbourne win. Uh, Manly win. Hey, Matty, I'm not advocating violence in any way, but we had a big bloke in our game who sort of tried to chop uh, one of our blokes down last week with a bit of a corky to the to the leg. Is that something that you know, players think about doing to slow some of these blokes down when they're out there? Well, Tim, it was it was a tactic. As, rugby, as long as rugby league has been played, there's always been certain tactics. Some have been subtle. If you go back bygone eras, 
uh, not subtle at all, yeah. just bell bloke around the head. I don't look. I don't think so. But one thing now is they're really the match review and people are really acutely aware of all the little things teams try to do. And uh, if anyone tries to do it, like they, they're really mm. clamping down on foul play. They'd be they'd be sent straight off, uh, or at the very least, receive a big suspension. Their season would be over. And so it's now you. you, you yeah, that sort of stuff's from a bygone era. You don't really, you don't really see it much anymore. I mean, the bottom line is this: when he carries the ball, if someone gets a good shot on him, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll hit him, yeah, legally in a way to, yeah, cause a bit mm. of pain and try to slow him up a little bit. Hey, three tries to the Pap last weekend. Is he back? Does that look like the Pap yeah. of old now? It, it did. It, what made a difference is. They, they sort of returned to their normal style. The Storm, you know, they centralised their attack. They made Yardis through the middle, and that's what brought Paps into play. It's been, mate, it's been a really feel for him. It's been such a tough to come back from that horrific concussion. Uh, but even on, and then on top of that, to have the expectation of dealing with, oh, mate, you know, he's juicy he's struggling. Oh, geez, he's going to hold his place in the side. Dealing with all those things has been really difficult. I, I remember going, I went down into the sheds after he got knocked out that game at the end of the match and oh geez you know I don't think I've ever seen a young bloke who was so rattled mm. and so knocked around and uh, my understanding it took him a long while to get going in training I don't think he engaged in training you know, for, for a fair period there I think he, mm. he missed he missed a lot and fair play to the Melbourne Storm when, when he got hit I, I, that day I saw Craig and Craig said mate he won't play for a couple of months and they stood by that. And that was a nasty, it was a nasty, nasty whack. Now, you know, um, you know, Eddie uh, Maguire better than most of us. You're great mates uh, back to your, you know, Channel Nine days. Um, are you sure. aware of the news that he wasn't allowed into Western Australia, into Perth for the, the final series? You know what? I read that. And I just, I, I just said to me, I, I, I remember reading it saying, I mean, here's a bloke that wanted to give to the, the, the Western Australian government, the economy, by taking me in their hot seat over there. And I just couldn't believe they wouldn't let him in. I mean, he only wanted to take an entourage of 50 people. <laughs> I mean, I think there are some things that are more important than COVID. Do you think? <laughs> oh, we're su- we were surprised. We were very surprised. He didn't I, can't, I can't oh, talk yeah. because I'm actually here, I so I've got, I've got no comment to make. Is he over there already? Could he, they didn't let him in at all? No, it's not no. going. It's, I don't think it's going. Not to going happen. to change. Oh. See, I, I think, mate. In my opinion, Eddie is a covert-free zone. <laughs> well, unfortunately, for him, well, I not... tell you what, we'll take him. We'll bring. We'll let him into New South Wales. You can bring me in a hot seat here for the grand final. Yeah. <laughs> well, what if it was the chase? I know you'd be up and about then. You'd be jumping up and down and banging the table. But uh, hot seat, mate. You're, yeah. you're a chase man. You've already shown your hand. Ah, oh, mate, I'm, I'm Larry Emder all the way. <laughs> uh, Matthew, um, is Melbourne Storm going to win this premiership as we let you go this morning, or have you found someone else? I look, Gaz. If I was uh, if I was setting a market, I would say Melbourne Storm two two dollars fifty, Penrith Panthers two dollars fifty, uh, and I'd have Manly about four fifty. So it's it's really it's 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 touch and go. The, the young Panthers, man, they're looking good. Yeah, and uh, congratulations to to you and the rest of the team there at Foxtel too for the launch of that new IQ Five box. That's just amazing what you've been able to achieve, you blokes. Thank you. Oh, mate. Well, it, it took a little bit of work, but I got there. <laughs> Have a great weekend, Matthew. We'll talk next week, hopefully. God bless you, boys. <laughs> and hey, go the teal. Go the mighty teal. Yeah. Those answers yeah, to the okay. questions come through yet, yeah, mate. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. I've got a, I've got a, I've got a, I've got a uh, phone hook up with Hinks and the boys a little bit later. <laughs> Good on Paddy John's joining us there. Part of 11.70 SEN Sydney. You can hear him on Fridays with uh, the Morning Glory. And uh, when we can find him on the Wednesday, because he's a very, very busy man, we speak, uh, we love having him on to talk a little bit of, uh, well, a little bit of social. Mm, everything. Pop culture, I guess you'd describe it.